Good evening, everybody. I'm, uh, my name is Gian Antonio Balletta. I'm working in the European Commission in uh, DG Regional and Urban Policy, and in particular in the unit which is responsible for macro regional strategies as well as uh, territorial cooperation programs, in particular transnational cooperation programs and uh, EPA CBC programs. Um, in this unit, indeed, I'm not the responsible of the unit, but the responsible of the um, EU strategy for the Adriatic and the Ionian region. And uh, now, in the next um, 15 minutes, no more than that, I know we are late, um, I will um, try to spend the first uh, minutes to do a sort of crash course for those who are not very familiar with this uh, macro-regional strategy. This is relatively new macro-regional strategy, which is covering the Adriatic uh, Sea. And then uh, I will, uh, in the second part, I will try to, 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 to build links between uh, the programs, the ESIF programs, uh, not just the territorial cooperation, but all the EU programs in the area and the macro-regional strategy itself. First of all, uh, let me just uh, um, allow me just to thank the, oh, the, 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 the uh, region, uh, the Veneto region, for hosting this event and for inviting me to participate in this event. Um, now, macro-regional strategies uh, are not what, what they are not. They are not uh, uh, something which is proposed by the Commission. We are not in the méthode communautaire, as we call it. Uh, we are not in the context of a proposal which is put forward by the, com by the Commission uh, to the Council. On the contrary, it's something which is bottom-up, with something which came from the countries themselves. Countries in the particular geographical areas, the Baltic, the Adriatic and the Union, the Danube, the Alpine areas, they decide to join forces. They decide to join forces because they, they, they recognize they have common challenges or op common opportunities as well, but common challenges in particular that uh, they can only be tackled jointly or can be tackled in a more efficient way by joining forces. So they joined forces. They decided to join forces. They go to the council actually to the European Council itself. The European Council, if they recognize they have good reasons for joining forces, the European Council request the Commission to help the countries setting up a macro-regional strategy. So the Commission in this context, the context of macro-regional strategy, the Commission is a facilitator, is somebody who is helping the country to set up the macro-regional strategy to, to, to focus on the challenges and opportunities of that areas and to, um, and, to, and, to, and to implement the strategy. I think this is important uh, just to underline. So we are slightly in another context uh, from uh, territorial cooperation programs. We do not have, first of all, macro-regional strategy, they do not have regulations. They do not have a legal base. Uh, they have. Uh, they are open-ended also in terms of time. They do not have financial resources, which is very important here to stress. They do not have dedicated financial resources. They have to use the financial resources existing in the area, in the region. And they do not have uh, dedicated structures, uh, EU structures, to look after them. So the Commission is facilitating this process, is helping the countries um, in, uh, in implementing this, uh, this strategy. Now, there is a definition in the common uh, re implementing regulation of the EU funds of what the macro-regional strategy is. I will, let you, I will leave you to, to read this. It's an integrated framework which is endorsed by the European Council relating to member states and non-EU countries in the same geographical area, area in order to address common challenges and to benefit from strength and cooperation. There are four macro-regional strategies so far. We started with the Baltic, um, in blue, uh, uh, so the countries in that area, they decided to join forces essentially to um, tackle uh, the challenge of pollution, pollution of the sea. They have a long track record of cooperation in the area, and at a certain moment they wanted to have this long um, uh, history of cooperation in the area. They wanted to, to have this recognized uh, as a EU. Uh, strategy, uh, EU cooperation framework. So they, they ask the Council and the European Council 
supported their proposal, so they, uh, they, uh, they received, they were uh, granted by this EU macro regional strategy for the Baltic Sea. It, they were followed by the Danube region in green here, so the Danube basin, uh, the, the countries in that basin, they joined forces and they achieved their objective of having this macro regional strategy. Third down the road was the Adriatic and the Ionian macro regional strategy, we will focus on that, and last but not least, the Alpine region, the macro regional, EU macro regional strategy for the Alpine region. This is the um, Adriatic and the Ionian macro regional strategies, uh, which is rather different from the other. Uh, well, one first element is that they um, is the only strategy which include uh, four non-EU countries along with four EU member states. So we have uh, Italy, or at least part of it, uh, Italy decided just to uh, have only the regions you, you see in this map uh, to be included in this macro regional strategy, while all the other countries, the entire territory is included. Um, then Slovenia, Croatia, and Greece as the four macro regional, as the four member states in this macro regional strategy, and four candidates and potential candidate countries, which are Albania, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Montenegro, and Serbia. Um, some key facts and figures here, uh, again, I'm not spending much time here, um, 70 million inhabitants, uh, 50 mil 55 million in EU countries and 14.5 in non-EU countries. Um, I get heterogeneity in terms of size, number of inhabitants, social economic development, administrative capacity. You can see here some uh, absolute figures uh, in terms of GDP, of course, uh, when it comes to Italy, it concerns the entire country and not just those, uh, those areas. But I mean, just to, 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 in a nutshell, um, we have uh, regions uh, within this macro regional strategy which are 120% above, uh, so 20% above the EU um, overage in terms of GDP per capita. Lombardy region is the example here. Uh, and on the contrary, we have uh, uh, regions or countries where the GDP per capita is 30% of the EU overage. And here we are talking about candidates and potential candidate countries participating there. Unemployment as well, it ranges from 4% in certain regions to 30%. So just to mention some, some elements over there. Here you have uh, the GDP in per capita in PPP to the EU 28. And again, you can see the huge differences which exist between basically the member states on one side, uh, Italy, then Slovenia, then Greece, then Croatia, and the non-EU countries on the other end of this, uh, of this, of this spectrum. So a lot of heterogeneity here. Um, the milestones, uh, uh, it was uh, requested by the Council in 2012, adopted by the Commission in 2014, and endorsed by the Council in 2014. Um, why eight countries and why those eight countries? because the strategy builds on the Adriatic and the Union uh, initiative, which is an intergovernmental initiative, which started in the year 2000, which included seven countries at the beginning, where Serbia and Montenegro, they were still uh, um, together, they were still a federation. When uh, in 2006, Montenegro declared independence following the referendum, Serbia decided to stay, and that's why our now countries are eight, and that's why there is also Serbia which is not an Adriatic country, but it was at the time of the Adriatic and the Union Initiative in the year 2000, it was part of this, uh, of this intergovernmental initiative. So that's why are those eight countries. Um, the challenges, transported energy, environment, natural and man-made hazards and risk, refugees and migrant crisis as well, this is, this is uh, a very recent challenge but which is uh, affecting the entire area. And opportunities, blue economies, sustainable seafood, connectivity, tourism. Now, if you are, and you are familiar with the Adriatic, with Italy-Croatia um, cross-border cooperation program, you have seen immediately that there are relationships between the challenges and the opportunities identified in the context of the macro-regional strategy and what you have in the program itself. Um, if we look at the general objective of this strategy, which is promote sustainable economic and social prosperity in the region through growth and jobs creation, is very similar to the global objective of the Italy-Croatia program, which is to increase prosperity 
and the blue growth potential of the area. Um, this uh, strategy has a twofold objective. This, the other one is fostering integration of participating Western Balkan candidate or potential candidate countries in the EU. Um, now, the, the strategy has four pillars. The pillar one is uh, blue growth. The pillar two is connecting the region, which is transport and energy. Pillar three is environmental quality, and pillar four is sustainable tourism. Now, four pillars, eight participating countries. So numbers are on our side. Each country is, or better, each pillar is coordinated by two countries, a EU member states and a non-EU country. So pillar one is coordinated by Greece and Montenegro, pillar two by Italy and Serbia, pillar three by Slovenia and Bosnia-Herzegovina, and pillar four by Croatia and Albania. We have some cross-cutting aspects, capacity building, very important in this region, research and innovation, SME development, and some horizontal principles, climate change mitigation and adaptation, and disaster risk management. Again, very close link with, uh, links with the uh, Italy-Croatia program. Um, I'm skipping these slides in which you will have for each of the pillar some of the topics which are on which the pillar is focusing, like blue growth is blue technology, fishery and agriculture, maritime and marine governance and services, and so on and so forth. So for the uh, transport, uh, our maritime intermodal, energy networks, environmental quality, both uh, mm, maritime and uh, terrestrial environment. Uh, for tourism uh, is uh, clearly something which concerns uh, sustainable and responsible tourism management and diversified tourism offer. Now, although growth rates have declined, the greatest contribution to development comes from Asia, and what is important here is that the new trade routes will pass through the Adriatic and the Union region. Well, just, give you, just to give you one, one element, huh? by um, the, the, the goods coming from Asia and passing through um, and, and arriving through the Mediterranean, if they can uh, um, use the North Adriatic port for their goods to reach Central Europe, they will save something like 3,000 kilometers, which make about uh, four to six days of uh, routes uh, to, to, to reach uh, Rotterdam, which is usually the, 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 the port they are using right now. So they are very much interested in, in this, so there is potential here to, to, to grow for, uh, in many different respects. But here, uh, the example I made is in terms of, um, of goods and, 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 and uh, ports capacity. Um, the governance of this macro-regional strategy, there are three levels. There is the political leadership, the ministers of foreign affairs, but also the ministers responsible for EU funds in the, four, in the eight countries. And then there is a coordination level, we call it the USA governing board, and the implementation. Now let's focus on the implementation for each of the four pillars. There is uh, a thematic steering group a thematic steering group where representatives from the eight countries sit together and they work for the implementation of the action plan of the strategy. Of course, the representative of the eight countries in the thematic steering groups come from the relevant line ministries, the Ministry of Environment for Pillar 3, which is the environmental pillar, Ministry responsible for tourism in Pillar 4, and so on and so forth, transport and, 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 and etc. Um, on top of this free governance level, uh, stakeholders, civil society, regional organizations, so on and so forth, should be strongly involved in the implementation of the strategy. Now, here, in, schematically, you will see that for each of the pillars, there is this USA governing board, which is the coordination, and then the thematic steering groups, one per pillar, and the stakeholders platform. Now, let, let's now... Uh, close uh, my presentation by focusing on the issue of implementation of the strategy. I mentioned at the beginning that the strategy, macro-regional strategies, they do not have dedicated allocation of funds. So in order to achieve the objectives of the strategy, they have to use all the available funds in the region. Being EU funds, being national, regional, local, public funds, 
being, in, being private investors as well, being uh, international financial institutions, uh, so loans, or blending of grants and loans and private, uh, and private funding as well. Um, but what is important when it comes to EU funds is that uh, um, all EU funds in the region should be called to contribute to the implementation of a strategy, if appropriate. Of course, uh, those, uh, those EU funds to contribute to the implementation of the strategy, they have to be in line, they have to have similar objectives to the one of the strategy. So in a, in a way, the strategy is, is overarching uh, um, objectives of all the countries in the region and the specific programs being mainstream programs uh, from uh, ESIF, so ERDF, as well as social funds, as well as fishery funds or rural development, may contribute if they have objectives which are in line with those of the macro-regional strategies. Um, now, what has been done so far in terms of implementation of the strategy? Um, the governance structures have been put in place, uh, the thematic steering groups in particular. Um, they are now stable platforms for, for cooperation after two years of, uh, since the launching of the strategy. They have uh, identified priority actions per uh, um, pillar, and uh, uh, they are now progressing towards the identification of uh, projects, projects that will contribute to the achievement of the uh, USR objective. They call it this process, they call it the labeling process. So they identify projects and they will label these projects as projects uh, recognized as uh, valuable for, uh, the, uh, for achieving the objective of the strategy. Um, and then the thematic steering groups, uh, so the implementation level of the strategy, initiated already a sustained dialogue with the managing authorities of the ESIF programs. We started in Dubrovnik last May when we had the first forum of the strategy. We had a, a technical meeting between the managing authorities from the eight countries and the, we call it the USCR key implementers, essentially the members from the eight countries sitting in the thematic steering groups, those implementing the action plan of the strategy. But uh, uh, after that initial kickoff meeting, we are now having meetings at national level, country by country, where managing authorities of that country, that specific country, will meet with the USR key implementers of that specific country. We start on the 5th of October in uh, Greece. We will now moving forward in the other countries in the following months, including the EPA countries where we will uh, also have this uh, meeting between uh, the two words. We call it that way. One word is the word of the uh, programs, ESIF program, not just territorial cooperation, but all the ESIF programs, as I said. And the other word is the word of the macro-regional strategy. These two words, they seem not to be connected as they should. So they have to work together because they will have, uh, and here we have the example in front of us with this program, they have common if not equal objectives. So uh, they have to work together for their mutual benefit. It's not that the programs have to give their blood in terms of their money to the strategy, not at all. It's that the two words, the strategy and the programs, they can cooperate together, as I said, for the mutual benefit, for having, when it comes to the program, better results, a better impact on what they are doing, a more efficient spending, uh, by cooperating with the other programs in, 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 in the region. Um, now, I, I, I will uh, really finish on with that. Now, I'm entering into, into something which is a bit more technical here, uh, is what, in which way a program and a strategy can cooperate. For instance, if we take the example of territorial cooperation programs where uh, programs are essentially implemented through call for proposal, not only. Huh? We have seen that in the Italy, uh, Croatia, also uh, strategic projects are foreseen. Yeah? Um, one way is, uh, when it comes to open call for proposal, is to have uh, the managing authority to discuss with the thematic steering groups uh, the preparation of the open call for proposal, the criteria which will be used in the open call for proposal, to see whether there is possibility to include criteria which will both serve the program and the strategy. 
Um, it's also possible to have targeted call for proposal. Uh, perhaps uh, the managing authority would like to discuss with the thematic steering groups whether they can target the call for proposal specifically to the priority actions identified by the um, strategy when these priority actions are coherent with the program itself, of course. Uh, in both cases, uh, the result of uh, a project selected through open call for proposal by the programs can ex post be included in the USA or can be labeled as USA projects if they are recognized as um, particularly helping uh, uh, the achievement of the USA, uh, uh, USA objectives. Now, I already mentioned this, which is uh, this uh, dialogue between the two worlds, which is now going on. Uh, and, uh, and will take place in all countries. Uh, we started already with Greece, as I mentioned. But let me just finish um, going back to this specific area. Uh, we are now discussing today the Italy-Croatia uh, cross-border program, which we have seen is, is the biggest in this area in terms of territorial cooperation program, the biggest territorial cooperation program in this area. Um, just to give you an order of magnitude, is the double of the Adrian Territorial Cooperation Program, which is a transnational cooperation program, and there's 100 million, about 100 million uh, euros of EU funds and national co-financing. Here is, is the double. There are other programs, territorial cooperation programs, and here we have the Croatia, Bosnia, and, uh, and, uh, and Montenegro cross-border cooperation program. We have uh, the IPA, CBC, Italy, uh, Albania, Montenegro. Um, there are the IPA CBC programs, which are not here today, but there are programs between Bosnia and Montenegro, between Montenegro and Albania, between uh, Bosnia and Serbia, Alba Montenegro and Albania. When it comes to territorial cooperation, we have several programs, and of course, Italy, Slovenia, uh, or Italy, Greece, which is outside the scope of the Adriatic, but still within the program. There are a number of territorial cooperation programs. There are also the, ASIF, the other ASIF programs. There are the mainstream national or regional programs, which are huge in terms of funding. Uh, we have the rural development program, we have a fishery program, we have the social funds. So the, the amount of funds, you remember I, I started by saying macro-regional strategy, they do not have dedicated allocation of funds. Indeed, they do not have. But the amount of funds, EU funds, which is available in the region is huge. I'm not saying that that huge amount of fund is there to promote the implementation of this macro-regional strategy or the others because the Danube and the Alpine re macro-regional strategies are also in, in some way uh, covering or partially covering this area at least. I'm not saying that this huge amount of funds is there to help implementing, to, to, to implement this macro-regional strategy, not at all, but will contribute to the implementation of a macro-regional strategy. Indeed, they can contribute, and as I said, there are mutual benefits here because the strategy can also contribute to increase effectiveness and impact and increase impact of the programs. If programs are... Um, implemented in an isolation from what is happening in the other countries in the region or within the same country, between the regions in the same countries, this is not something positive for the programs and certainly not positive for the macro-regional strategy, which is uh, a product of the same country. So it's a matter of um, finding a consistency between what is decided between the eight countries in a macro-regional context where they have identified global objectives for this area and what is done at a more micro level with the territorial cooperation programs, with um, other mainstream programs. Yeah? Thank you very much. I was a bit too long indeed. Thank you, Gian Antonio. I must say that I'm very pleased that you managed to clarify what the macro-regional strategies are and their